Hello, you are watching the Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at today's headlines. Casualties mount in deadly blasts in Afghanistan. Chile's Constitutional Assembly debates key proposals. Police killings continue unabated in the United States, says report. And for our final story, we take a look at Brazilian social movement struggle for housing. At least 31 people are believed to have been killed in four explosions across Afghanistan on April 21st. Sources told the BBC 87 people had been wounded. Attacks have been claimed by the Islamic State terror group. One of the bomb blasts targeted a mosque in mazar sharif which is the capital of Balk province. Islamic State stated that the blast was carried out using remotely detonated explosives placed in a bag. Sources cited by Tolo News said that 400 worshippers were present in the Ser Dukan Mosque at the time. It is one of the biggest mosques in the area and is used by Shia Muslims from the ethnic Hazara group. The community has been repeatedly targeted by Sunni Islamic militant outfits, including the Islamic State. The group has also claimed another attack in Kunduz. The vehicle was blown up near a police station which killed four people and injured 18. The BBC has also reported a third explosion in Nangarhar province where a Taliban vehicle was hit by a mine. Four of its members were killed. The fourth blast was caused by a mine planted in the neighborhood of Niaz Beg near Kabul. Two children were wounded. Thursday's attacks took place two days after two bomb blasts in the national capital. The attacks took place at Abdul Rahim Shahid's high school and near Mumtaz Education Center. Both are located in the predominantly Shiite Hazara neighborhood of Dashte Barchi. At least six people were killed and over 20 were injured. Next, we go to Chile, where key developments took place in the Constitutional Assembly this week. The body has been tasked with drafting a new Magna Carta to replace the exclusionary neoliberal text of the Pinochet dictatorship. The assembly was set to vote on 52 articles related to environmental protections on April 21st. They were presented as part of the second report of the assembly's Environment Commission. The articles were related to the mining sector, water resources and use and soil among other things. The report also conducted issues of food sovereignty, energy, human rights and property. Constituents were set to vote on each article separately. However, the entire proposal received only 98 out of 103 votes necessary for it to be approved. It has been sent back to the Commission for revisions. Meanwhile, in a major step earlier this week, the Assembly proved a proposal for water and wind. These resources will be enshrined as natural assets which can be used under permits but not possessed. The Chamber also approved key social and labour rights in a session held on April 20th. These include the constitutional rights to decent housing, work, health and freedom of association. Constituents also approved proposal for the recognition of domestic work. Constituent Maria Rivera stated that the arbitrary dismissal of workers would be prohibited. The right of workers to participate in company decisions has also been approved. The Constitutional Assembly is a product of the demands raised during the 2019 social uprising protests. The new constitution must be completed by July, after which it will be put up for a referendum on September 4th. We now take a look at the United States, where police forces have killed 589 people in traffic stops since 2018 up to April 2022. Approximately 10% of the 1,100 police killings recorded each year were related to traffic violations. This data has been compiled and analyzed by the Mapping Data Violence Project. Most killings by police begin with traffic stops, mental health checks and domestic disturbances. Other instances included non-violent offenses and cases where no crime was even alleged. Activists have long argued that police should not even be deployed in some of these cases. This is especially important in cases of mental health crisis, which police are not equipped to handle. U.S. police have killed 348 people in 2022 so far. 
Data also shows that black people are three times more likely than white people to be killed by the police. High rates have been observed in 48 out of the 50 largest U.S. cities. Black people constituted 28% of those killed in traffic stops by police in 2021. Meanwhile, they form only 13% of the population. Most recently, 26-year-old Patrick Loya was killed by police at a traffic stop in Michigan on April 4th. An autopsy has shown that he was shot in the back of his head. 20-year-old Dante Wright was killed in Minnesota in 2021 after being pulled over for a hanging air freshener and reportedly expired registration. Mapping police violence have also documented rampant impunity when it comes to police killings. 98.2% of cases between 2013 and 2022 have not resulted in officers being charged with any crime. And for our final story, we go to the state of Sierra in Brazil. Since 2014, its capital has recorded a 53% increase in the number of unhoused people living on the streets. 22% of the people asked stated that they had been living in these conditions for one year. Social movements and groups have been organizing and occupying existing infrastructure to address the crisis. This includes the neighborhoods, villages and favelas movement or the MLB. It has occupied and housed 100 families in an abandoned courthouse in Fortaleza. Here is a video by Brazil de Fato on the housing deficit in the city and MLB's fight for better living conditions. Let's have a look. It is not necessary to walk many blocks to see the tough reality that devastates Ceará's capital city. Whole families that, without a house, have in the streets the only alternative of a place to call home. According to the Municipal Street Population Census, carried out in February this year, 2,653 people live on the streets of the city of Fortaleza. This number represents a rise of more than 53% when compared to the previous survey, carried out in 2014. We talk about homelessness, but the problems and issues of people living in the streets don't begin with homelessness. Before losing the houses, before going to live in the streets, research showed that there is a previous poverty condition. Organize, occupy and resist. This motto has been guiding many of the acts seeking for solutions to the homelessness issue. It has been about eight months since the neighborhood, villages and favelas movement has been occupying an old palace of justice discommissioned seven years ago. Many of the families living here now had just 350 reais provided by the emergency aid federal program and had no conditions for affording rent. In my case, I received only 250 reais monthly. So we are here together. We will resist. We have legal instruments to make this real estate be directed to popular housing, especially in more central areas of the city, such as downtown Fortaleza, because it facilitates access to public services. It already has an urban infrastructure at people's disposal and, mainly, it becomes easier access to workplaces, social rights, education and health care. About 100 families from Fortaleza's poor neighborhoods are part of the occupation which became home for many people that had to choose between spending their money on food or rent. The place became a political space that assembles most of Ceará's housing movements. After eight months of struggle, the concession on the building was not allowed, but the families got a total of 40 social rents. These rents will be neatly run by the social movements seeking to keep these families living in downtown Fortaleza. So, although the non-concession on the building, they continue in downtown Fortaleza claiming housing in these areas, where there is an already consolidated urban infrastructure.
And that's all for today's episode. For more such stories, visit our website at www.peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you for watching.